Hello guys and welcome back to the Learning Droid for the burn on the South Barn sign for the Orchard Barn project. I'm going to be using my Peter Child's variable temperature wire tip or wire point pyrography machine again. And once again we have everything we need. We have pliers, wire brush, screwdriver, we have two pens, a glass dish for hot bits, though we don't actually use it much because thanks to the two pens we're switching backwards and forwards between the two bits we're going to use. We've got spare bits and assorted different bits and pieces, uh, assorted different uh, wire points in case we want to do different wire point techniques. In this case I'm going to probably be using the same two points I did the Orchard Barn sign with, in which case that is a heavy or super heavy fine detail point which is 23 gauge wire detail point and a fine detail point, not a super heavy detail point. And the fine detail point is 26 gauge wire done in exactly the same design. So as you can see with this design, and as you can see, new camera position yet again, as I eagerly try and find the perfect camera position. Um, once again we've got our fan, which will, blow, which will be blowing smoke away from us. And because we've got the fan, uh, the points aren't going to be as hot, so we're going to have a slightly higher setting on the machine. So first off, zero out the machine. You don't have to do this, you can just plug things in, switch it on, and it will get as hot as it gets. I like to zero the machines out before I start, simply because I feel that with a zeroed out machine, you're not going to get any surprises. You're not going to get any suddenly hot bits or anything like that. See, with a zeroed out machine, I can just leave my piece, leave my pen here as I plug it in. And if I accidentally left it on, it's not going to matter. Make sure that's plugged in nice and tight. So we're going to pop our fan on. So you don't have to worry about smoke. And we're going to turn the machine on. So once again, it's zeroed out, so there's not really any electricity running through the tip here. Some machines, because this isn't a calibrated knob, may have a little bit of electricity running through them when it's zeroed out. And again, of course, we have our sacrificial piece. So this one's quite simple design. We've got a compass south barn and some leaves. It's not going to take me nearly as long as the Orchard Barn project did, which is good for you because the Orchard Barn project, the Orchard Barn sign, took me about two hours <laughs> of constant burning because there was a lot of detailed stuff there. There was a lot of detail in all of it really. Uh, we had a very detailed barn sign and a very detailed uh, raccoon and apples and then we had the actual wording as well. So that's a little bit too cold, so what we're going to do is we're going to boost it up a little bit. Now this wood I found isn't ideal for burning because it's got a lot of density variation between the soft wood and the hard wood within it, between the uh, soft grain and hard grain, the light and dark. So with the same amount of heat and pressure you get two very, very distinct depths and darknesses of burn. And that's not the end of the world, guys. But it does make for a slightly rougher look. Which is fine, because we're going for a rustic look with this sign anyway. So it doesn't matter too much. But if you were trying to do really detailed work, as I said on the palette, on the free, free wood uh, video, Pallet wood is not ideal for really detailed work. I said that on the video where I was showing you the pallet, and I said it here and now. If you're going to go for really detailed work, you want something that's a little bit more um, standard. So something like, I mean a lot of people say that birch wood is good, birch faced ply as well or perhaps basswood. I found basswood to have a very nice even grain. Obishi has a little bit of a rough grain, but again, it's got a very small fine grain, which is why dollhouse, you, people are making dollhouse equipment and dollhouse furniture and things like Obishi, because it's got a very, very fine grain. And the grain is so small, the variation, even though there's a big density variation, isn't nearly as awkward. So once again, we're just and as always guys, move the piece of wood you're burning to get the right angle for the burn. Don't try and burn at 
one angle, don't clamp the wood on the table. That's why I cut it down to size guys, so that it's small enough for me to rotate. If you've got a really big piece, then you might have to rotate around it rather than rotating it. But if you can, it's always best to be sitting somewhere comfortable and to rotate the piece to what you want. As always guys, the wire is tucked under my elbow and it goes back behind my arm. This keeps it out of the way of the um, hot tip which protects it from getting burnt through. I mean that is one of the problems. Pyrography machines tend to have very stiff wires. I don't know why. Well, most things tend to have very stiff wires. Um, they don't tend to have very flexible flex. <laughs> which can be awkward but at the same time it's not a huge problem guys it's not a be all, all end, be, be all and end all problem and I've yet to use a machine that doesn't have quite a stiff flex on the pen so far the Peter Charles machine has actually been one of the better ones but it's still quite a stiff quite a stiff flex and again the density variation in the wood is causing me to have to go to a more pointless style at the moment because that was a very hard bit of wood and it wasn't burning smoothly with a line style as I desperately try to get it to burn least acceptably without having to do point style on it so guys what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep filming but I'll just in the YouTube video I'll just speed this up before I do that Another use for a nice little either nylon or soft brass wired brush is if you just run it over the piece that you've just burnt, it'll take off any bits of um, scrag and charcoal and things that have come off, or any bits of burnt resin that have come off while you've been pyrographying. So guys, enjoy the view, and I'll be back in a bit. Well. I don't know whether I should leave this full speed. Some people have complained that my stuff doesn't have sound. Guys, if you if, if I put music on it and you don't like the music, um, you'd mute it and what and you really wanted to see the video, you'd mute it and you'd go put on some of your music. So if I don't have music, guys, because there are loads of copyright issues, and even with um, copyright free stuff, there are issues involved with using it. Um, if you don't like the fact that there's no music, guys, really, it's a great idea to put on some of your own, as I very rarely like music in YouTube videos. Um, I actually have found, I think, one video that had music I really liked. And so I put on my music in the background, guys. Um, I'm sorry that I don't have any music at the moment, um, but I don't really want to... Well, I don't really have time at the moment to go through all the sort of rules and regulations for for using stuff and I don't just want to jump into using it because I like my YouTube channel and I don't want to lose it for copyright reasons so I don't want to use it, lose it to a copyright complaint so for now guys if I do a sped up video it's going to be without sound I may later do some um, after fact conversation or after fact talking over the top of it And now it's going to be no sound, sorry about that. But, as I said, this you can always put your own music on in the background, it won't offend me. I won't be able to hear it, so of course it won't. And I hope you enjoy, guys, so we'll do the sped up section.
Hey guys, so um, as you can see I'm using a very point list style on the letters and I've switched back to the uh, heavy point, to the super heavy detail point, the 23 gauge. The reason I'm doing this is it's very hard to get an even burn on this kind of wood because of the variation in grain and in um, yeah, in grain density. Now, you may have noticed that my fan is now pointing straight at my bit of wood. This cools down the tip of my pyrography machine a bit, so I've upped the voltage a little bit. But the reason for this is, um, I don't, this, this particular way of doing it, and I need these burns to be very deep, because I need these letters really to stand out. Um, so, unfortunately, it produces a lot of smoke. You may have seen a couple of flickers of flame during the sped up version of this, you may have not caught them. Basically when I hit a piece of wood that is very very resinous, it's got a lot of resin in it, um, it can ignite the resin and cause a little teeny tiny flicker of flame and a little teeny tiny sort of mini explosion on the wood. It's not really a big issue because uh, there's not really enough of it to actually cause any problems, but it's one of the things that happens with really resinous wood with wood that's got a lot of resin in it, you'll get the occasional flicker of flame as you're working. Especially if your bit is turned all the way up and is glowing red hot. Now I'm being very careful guys and I'm just doing little taps and occasionally you'll see me go back and tap the same place a couple of times. The reason for that is I don't want to press or put a lot of pressure on a bit of wood that isn't very dense. So I'm doing these tiny little taps and when I find a bit of wood that doesn't burn enough thanks to a tiny little tap I go back and I put a little bit more pressure on there. Or not pressure, I give it a little bit more time because that's really the deciding factor is how long it's burnt for. Gonna make sure I go right up to the edge. And these are slightly inset now because I'm burning them so deep. But the reason I'm burning them deep is as I said, I really want them to stand out. I really want to give them a lot of presence. I don't want them to ever sort of get sanded off. And I'm doing them very dark and doing very deep burn because this that will help it resist uh, UV. Um, as I said before, you'll find that if you do a lot of very fine lines and a lot of very um, fine burn on something that's going outside, is that first off the varnish is going to eat it and you'll lose a lot of the definition when you varnish it because a lot of the fine lines and colours will get eaten up in exterior varnishes because they all do have some tone to them. And the other thing is you're going to lose some of the definition and some of the detail is going to get eaten up over time as the sun shines on it. Just like wall paper and paint fades and um, books fade, paintings fade when placed in sunlight. Pyrography does exactly the same thing. It gets sun bleached very slowly. Now this bit's going to be interesting because I don't have a pattern to work off because my pattern didn't transfer properly. That's okay. Freehand pyrography. Some people do freehand pyrography only. I'm not that good so I prefer to do pattern pyrography primarily. You may wonder why I've joined up the R and the N. It's just because on the um, Orchard Barn project as you may have seen or may not have seen, the R and the N do join up on this letter. So as you can see lots of smoke but nice strong fan good bit of ventilation, clears away the smoke. I can smell smoke now, whereas I couldn't previously while I was doing the less smoky bits of the burn, but it's a very low amount of wood smoke that's actually reaching my face because we've got the fan pointed, nice and strong blast of air right at 
piece and I'm trying to keep my face back and away. I do have this habit of hunching over the pieces that I'm doing and I'm trying to break myself of that habit because it's not very good for me because I'm breathing in far more smoke than I need to and it's not really necessary. I mean the reason I do it is that I don't have really good fine motor control fine motor control in my hands because I've got tight skin and all sorts of other issues but there we go guys that is South Barn thanks for watching guys and we'll see you soon